to at the moment, I can create an avatar of myself, of you, Danny, right. integrate the the voice and start integrating just based on social media or even writings, your language, your different parts. So I can create an entire digital twin of yourself. And then mm-hmm. if I have some medical information associated with my avatar, I can do everything that is in Star Trek. And this is already possible. It's not in 10 years. So right. Uh, when it comes to orthopedic, you're using it for education and your company is doing fantastic results. And I, I think that if you look at, uh, for instance, some of the things you have, you have like the the medical bed uh, where the patient is, and then you have the different parts of where you integrate like the non-operative spine, all these mm-hmm. different things around the, the VR part, which I think is crazy and fantastic what you guys are doing. But right now, all of this can be done much more than just education. So my question is, are you taking this from the pure education part to start integrating this in the medical um, uh, developments and the medical day-to-day operations? And the second question, sorry, it's two questions. Uh, the second question is, how we tackle the issues that coming with data? Because we are already on this, okay? We cannot just, for instance, my company can actually create an avatar of anyone in the planet and starting doing this out of the record. And it's not a deep fake because a deep fake is a personality that you create in GI mm-hmm. and uh, especially or Photoshop kind of uh, integration. I'm talking pure avatar that represents the body of a person. And if right. you actually scan the person, you can actually go completely ball games into a lot of things. So how do you see these two contexts right now? Because there's the reality of implementing this in reality. And there's the part of the ethical, uh, business, economical possibilities that come out of this. Uh, so the... The medical applications for this, although, you know, we started in orthopedics, uh, we're, this is a broader application. You know, we, we think of it in terms of medical education in general. Uh, orthopedics made sense because as an orthopedic surgeon, you know, that seemed to be the natural extension and where we'd start uh, referred to as a beachhead. You start in one area and then you can naturally expand based on how the market responds. So I think to answer your first question, the applications are across medicine and medical education, first of all, for this technology. When you think of, you know, your question about scanning patients and avatars, I think there's some companies already doing that right now where you can actually perform a virtual visit in the virtual space with a complete digital twin of yourself as a provider or a patient and the opposite uh, you know, patient provider actually being in that same virtual space. So what we're actually doing is it could be actually addressing a problem that we're talking about, uh, which is, you know, there is a shortage in human capacity, meaning that there's not enough nurses, there's not enough physicians, but you could open up this to a much broader application where you could have patients and seeing a provider in a completely different part of the world. And I think that's where the avatars and the metaverse really could play a powerful role in this space. But again, it's still early, as you mentioned, that's going to be, you know, a future consideration in a future state. And do you think from your experience so far, and because you have the three angles, you have the angle in one end of building the VR and integration of VR, special for education, but you have as well the scientific and the medical part. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're going to be able to integrate this on day to day um, in I would say, in a, because at the moment, everything is possible. You don't even need to wait. It's just a right. question of starting to have, if you have a private hospital, uh, for instance, I, 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 bet, I met a billionaire um, that actually just spent $10 million. He went to a private clinic and they did everything mm-hmm. we're talking about here. Um, so this is already happening. Of course, the point right now is that we scale this technology that we've seen in films and we do it as well to improve a bit of the system. So I would like to ask this question because it's important for people listening to us yeah. This it's not science fiction, it's reality right now. So the, I think it goes back to the idea of value. You know, physicians and healthcare providers in general are really restricted in the amount of time they have during the day. And they're trying to accomplish a lot. And this is one of the reasons I've stayed in practice while being part of, you know, Precision OS is because I always want to have that clinical lens. Meaning that if I'm in the office seeing patients, I ask myself, what technology or what problem do I, am I having today, which would be, or allow me to be more efficient and more effective? When I'm in the operating room, I'm asking the same question is, what, what can I implement or what's annoying me during the day that, I'm, that I would hope uh, some technology could help solve that problem for me? And so I think when we talk about anything regarding to how to scale a technology in any industry, 
having that domain sort of knowledge and that frequency of interaction with the problem on a regular basis allows us to produce a solution for that. So scale would come after value. So if we can ensure value, we can ensure scale. And I think that's the lens by which we look at how any technology would be integrated into healthcare. Yeah, very interesting. And, and I completely subscribe. <laughs>